Hi and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the Mauritania Heart Diary. The quest requirements are Haunted Mine, King's Ransom, In Aid of the Mirror, Desert Treasure and Great Brain Robbery until you have access to Harmony Island. Skill requirements are 50 woodcutting, 50 fire making, 50 construction, 53 farming, 55 mining, 58 slayer, 66 magic, 70 prayer, 70 defense and 71 agility. All of these stats can be boosted except for construction, magic, prayer and defense. For the items needed, a Karel portal in your portal room in your POH. And if you do not have that, you will need to have 100k, a hammer, a saw, two limestone bricks, three teak planks, 200 law runes and a 100 blood runes. Then you also need to have three watermelon seeds, uh, farming equipment which can be stored in your uh, tool leprechaun. Then you will need to have any kind of axe and pickaxe that you can use, a tinderbox, a light source, a witch wood icon, a knife and one mushroom spore. Next for the recommended items is as always some weight reducing armor and this time two stamina potions. That would also be helpful is a slayer helmet or a nose pack. Then also two buckets of super compost. Uh, you can simply store that in a tool leprechaun as well. And then lastly is a decent weapon and some medium level food. But this medium level food uh, can easily get rotten or given to NPCs. The next for the teleports is just one to your POH and then one teleport to the nature grotto. The easiest access to the nature grotto which is located over here is by using the uh, feather ring which is located next to it and with or the agility shortcut updated here uh, it is fastest to get there by feather ring but therefore you will definitely need 50 agility to get across that rock. Then uh, access to Mosla Harmless this can also be done by using an ectophile or you can use a Mosla Harmless teleport scrolls to get directly access to that island. So where I want to complete my first task is in my POH. So let's get over there. In building mode. So uh, if you do not have a portal room, you first need to build one. This requires 50 construction and cannot be boosted. Doesn't really matter. Build a centerpiece, which requires then two limestone bricks. Build a portal frame, just the lowest one. Direct the portal using the teleportation focus and then use Karel, which is number seven. Enter the Karel portal and this will be task number one completed. Next, let's go west. And now it's time to plant our mushrooms. Uh, it is very important to use super compost so your mushrooms have two extra lives because you are unable to protect uh, your mushrooms. There is no gag member near this patch. So let's grab our farming equipment. I don't have a spade. Not really needed right now. Put some super compost on the mushroom patch. Put the mushroom spore inside of the mushroom patch. And let's deposit our farming equipment. Right, next let's go further west to the river self. Keep going west until you see a shortcut sign. Let's squeeze through the railing. And then we'll need to hover south, first go a bit south and try to climb the rocks. Then squeeze through the other railing. This will not complete your task. First we will need to get through the railing once again. Go back down. And I'll make your way back to Mauritania to complete your second task. Next, let's run north and now we will need to climb the level 71 required agility obstacle. That is the one that leads up to the Aberrant Spectres. 
So, uh, but that would be helpful to have a no spec, else your uh, stats will be drained a lot. Also, uh, use protect from magic before you climb up this uh, metal chain. So, no spec, protect from magic, climb up this spiky chain. If you fail, try again. Oh my fucking god, I took the wrong shortcut. So after you've climbed up this level 61 spiky chain, let's go to the blood vaults and then follow this path until we see the other uh, agility shortcuts and that will and that is the one that will require 71. This should be here at the infernal mages. Let's climb this spiky chain. Yeah, no need to wield your Slayer Helm or Protection Prayers, Necrails are unaggressive. And let's go back to our tasks. And let's now use our Ectophile or Teleport Scroll to make ourselves to Muscle Harmless. Alright, from here let's go to uh, Harmony, therefore we'll need to go to the coastline. So let's go south first, if you've used the uh, Teleport Scroll as well. Let's go to the quest sign here at the dock of Mosla Harmless and let's teleport to Harmony. Open the door and let's go to the farming patch. This is the one located just east of the hub patch. Use it to Leprechaun, Seed Dibber, Super Compost and also just uh, rake the allotment. Use super compost and then plant the watermelon seed. Alright, let's store it again. And let's go back to Brother Tranquility to make ourselves back to Muscle Harmless. Alright, now it's time to kill a... Uh, cave horror as well as chopping a mahogany tree and and burning the logs So be sure to have your witchwood icon your axe your tinderbox a light source I'm going to deposit my hammer and my saw I'm going to take a spade which I'm going to store in my two leprechaun later and That should be it for now uh, Also bring a weapon if you do not have a cave horror kill registered at the moment and that should be it also bring along a teleportation method to the nature grotto because that is the next location where we will go to. So as you may know the cave horror cave is just east. Uh, exit the pirate town and just keep going east. Just keep going east passing the jungle horrors until you reach the coast. Go to the water, go a bit south and there you should see a dungeon sign. Right, enter the entrance and let's go north. Now we'll just need to keep going north, equip your witch icon uh, thingy and just keep going north. Let's make our way through the entirety of the cave. Therefore we will need to hit the most northern wall. Oh by the way, if you come across a cave horror level 80, just kill one of them. Alright, one has been defeated and let's just keep going north. Alright, I can't go any more further north. Next we will need to go southeast. Okay, I'm going to start using Protect for Melee, they're hitting way too hot, or way too high. Just keep going southeast, until you can go further southeast. Which should be around this big empty area. Uh, yes, alright, let's then go to the eastern wall, go north, and then we should arrive at the end of the dungeon already. Yes, here is our two ladders. Uh, let's climb up the first one and here you see a mahogany tree. Let's chop down this tree and use our tinderbox on the logs that we will get. 
and this will be task number six completed. Right, let's go to Nature Grotto right now. I will be using a Ferring Teleport. Right, right click on the fairing and configure and let's use the code BIP. All right, teleport. Let's cross the stepping stone and we have pretty much arrived to the nature grotto. Right, let's go to it. Let's cross that broken bridge or open bridge. Click on the darkness in the hall to enter the grotto and let's turn on some piety and pray at the altar of nature to complete yet another task. Next let's go to the haunted mine. Uh, therefore we will need to have a pickaxe. If you've uh, banked it that would kind of suck. Uh, grab a pickaxe that is needed to mine a mithril ore in the haunted mine. And afterwards we will be going to uh, bug the rot. So if you've lost your pickaxe, uh, you can go through this shortcut and go to the bank of bug the rot. And then make your way back to the haunted mine. So just like in the haunted mine quest, just keep going south. Turn your camera south until you see the the, the minecart that you have to climb over. Skip the second one, enter the cart tunnel and turn your camera south after you've immediately entered the cave and you should find a new cart tunnel. Go through it and you will be at the, well, where you've ended the haunted mine quest. Let's mine the ore vein here just a little bit north of where you've spawned. Mine one mithril ore, and this will be task number six, seven completed. Right, let's now go to our minigame teleports and use the Shades of Morton minigame to teleport ourselves to Morton. Uh, if you've already used this te minigame teleport, then you simply have to exit this mine and run east to Burgerot via that uh, shortcut, uh, the hole in the fence. Once you've arrived in Morton or Burgerot, let's go to the Burgerot bank to prepare for one uh, hard diary. No, for one hard uh, temple tracking game. So here in the bank, what we will be able to deposit is our Slayer Helmet or our nose pack, our Tinder box, which with Icon, our light source and our pickaxe is all not needed. What we will need is our axe, our knife, a decent weapon, weight reducing armor and then a lot of medium level food, which should be, that should be enough. Some stamina potions. Access to a fairing is not needed. I'm going to keep the spade before I forget again. Yeah, I think this should be about it. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go to the entrance of Burg the Rot, where there is the minigame sign and a lot of NPCs. Let's right click on the several NPCs here until you find one with a heart option behind their name. Right click and escort. Nice fade out and which route it doesn't really matter which one but route one is the longest but the easiest one so let's take that one. There should be the least amount of encounters.
All right, awesome. Absolutely no uh, encounters. Now, if you weren't that lucky and you do encounter some random events, which are random for everyone, uh, I su suggest you to watch the two minute video of Lame OSRS, how to do the temple tracking minigame. But basically, if you come across any combat event, you can simply run past it and right click around the edges to evade path. Now, if you come across a campsite with three sitting NPCs, you simply need to give each of the three NPCs some edible food uh, to pass that event. And next, there are three events with a river. If there are zombies, kill those zombies for planks, get the planks and use them on the broken bridge to get across. If there is a bridge with cuttable trees, cut three trees and use the logs on the bridge to get across. And if there is a river with no bridge, then you will just need to use the knife on the most southern tree three times. And then use those three items that you've gotten from the tree to make a rope. Use the rope on the tree just next to the one that you've just cut to get across. And then fourth is a some kind of river, which is a, a very slimy one. Uh, therefore, you will need to use a knife on a bush to get multiple branches. With those branches, you feel the firmness of the soft ground in the river to know if you're able to stand on it. Just keep standing on squares that you're able to stand on to eventually be able to get across, but this will take a while. So once you've arrived in Patrodomus, you can already go check up on your mushrooms and your watermelons. Once both patches are ready for harvesting, pick a mushroom and pick the watermelon to complete those both tasks. Now the mushrooms do take 4 hours to be fully grown and the watermelons on Harmony Island only take 80 minutes. Now because both of them have no protection and they also have uh, 4 cycles each, 4 farm cycles, so they're able to get diseased 4 times. But because we have used super compost they have been given 2 extra lives but uh, the likelihood of the mushrooms or the watermelons dying is still quite high. So uh yeah check up on your mushrooms like once every hour and then check your watermelons on harmony island once every 20 minutes to be sure that they are not getting diseased if they are just use some plant cure that you can buy from the grand exchange or any farming shop next to every uh, herb patch use it on the diseased patch and then you will be a okay so yeah i will be back in four hours all right, at least 80 minutes later, I forgot my fucking spade. Oh no, it's in my inventory. Good, task completed. Let's go to the mushrooms. All right, and here at the mushroom patch, pick some mushrooms. If you're an Iron Man, by the way, keep these mushrooms because if you have the farming and construction level, you will need to have at least 10 mushrooms to build your own ferro ring in your POH. Right, this will be task completed. Why is my shit not done? Right, after that huge fail, after you've harvested your mushrooms, you have completed all of your diary tasks. Let's go to Le Sabre and ask for our reward. This will be an experience lamp of 15,000 experience that will be granted in any skill to your liking if it is at least a level 50 or higher. Now Robin also offers 26 bone meal and bucks of slime in exchange for bones. Double Mortmire fungi when casting bloom. 50% more prayer experience when burning shades remains. 50% more runes from looting the barrow's chest. Access to the shortcut west of the town of Mosla Harmless. Unlimited teleports to Burgerot via the Mauritania Lex number 3. 7.5% more Slayer experience when you kill them on task in the Slayer Tower. And then also a Bone Crusher. And how to get that is by talking to a Ghost Disciple here at the Ectofunctus. I don't have a Ghost Peak Amulet, but the Mauritania Lex works as a Ghost Peak Amulet. So just talk to a Ghost Disciple and he will give you a Bone Crusher. Now this thing will automatically crush Bone Drops for half the experience that you would get from burying them. Uh, but this will cost charges and how this will be charged is by using Ecto tokens on them. 
but if you were to trade 26 bones for bone meal and slime with Robin, you will have plenty of uh, Ecto tokens to charge your Brown Crusher with. So this was my guide how to complete the Mortania Heart Diary. Hopefully it helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.